are women. We are free. We are Shut men. up! Thank you. Here's me explaining why the argument saying men invented everything is stupid and shouldn't be said on International Women's Day. Men invented that phone you're on, that house you're living in, the app you're using. Did you watch the video or? Men invented everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, why? What? Tell me why men have invented most things. Because women are stupid. I haven't got a brain. Only straw. <laughs> okay. Is it that or is it the fact that we've been oppressed for centuries? Mm, weren't allowed to go to college until the 60s, get an education? Well, that's still severely underrepresented in STEM majors where all the inventions are from. You don't wanna talk about that. You wanna talk about the fact that the women who did invent things had their ideas stolen? Mm, because those men, like other things on their body, have teeny tiny <laughs> egos. Put a pause on that one. Here, now we're going down the alternate history. <laughs> Here, no, actually, did you know the cotton gin was invented by a lady, but they covered it all up. <laughs> it was really secret ladies invented everything. They, they, you know, a woman invented the automobile, but they covered it up. Who? Them. They did. Bill Gates up to that little chicken neck. <laughs> and also, separate note, women didn't really invent anything, but they didn't invent it because they were oppressed. Which, which they weren't, but let's say that they, let's say that they were. Well, how'd they get oppressed? Wouldn't that be a knock against the feminist? If the women could be oppressed, then wouldn't that be another mark in the, in the column for the men? Now, of course, the, the feminist framing is just totally wrong anyway, because the relation between the sexes is not primarily antagonistic. It's a relationship of love and complementarity which the women have forgotten since the 1960s when the feminists ruined everything. And then the feminists have this alternative history, which is that women <laughs> had awful, terrible lives before, conveniently, right before the time that your like boomer great aunt, you know, started hanging around Berkeley. And then all of a sudden everything got bright and rosy. But if you, if you look at, at women's uh, reported happiness, for instance, both objectively and relative to men, they've declined in both cases since the 1960s. So feminism has failed at everything. <laughs> because it's a, a false anthropology and it's made women much worse off than they were before feminism. If it wasn't for the suffragettes, I probably wouldn't be standing here now. I'd be in a kitchen where I belong. So they've, they've got to retcon everything and rewrite history and, and, uh, and, and try to make these, these incoherent, mutually contradictory arguments for, for why things were so bad. On the one hand, men really didn't invent everything, but it's because they oppressed the women. On the other hand, women actually invented all this stuff, but it was all just written out by the men and the Illuminati and the, I don't know, the Freemasons, maybe. Okay, stitch this if you have a subtle feminist power move that you do on the regular. Okay, disregard the noises, I'm making pasta. Um, I do this constantly, I've been doing it for years. It actually bothers my boyfriend whenever we go out because he doesn't understand why I do it until I explain it to him. I never move out of the way. I will let a man walk into me before I move. Because they are so used to just like not interrupting their time and just to proceed forward and keep moving until they're in my line. And I just keep walking. I've been like shoulder checked. I've been everything. But I'm like, if you're not moving, I'm not moving. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Haven't moved for a man in years. I kind of like that, actually. I don't, that's not a feminist move, necessarily. Maybe it, there's an overlap here, but that's just an old-fashioned move. Like, if I'm in, in public, and there's a woman coming where I'm coming, I, I will step out of the way, always. You always let a woman enter the room before you. You always let a woman onto or out of an elevator before you. always pull the chair for a woman. You always have the woman go first. That's, that's called chivalry. That's called being a gentleman. Your parents must be very proud. So what she's saying is some men aren't gentlemanly today, and so I'm not going to get out of their way. That's good, actually. That's a good, whether she's doing it for feminist reasons or whatever, it's good to remind men that they need to act like gentlemen. When men tell me I'm beautiful, I will usually reply with, I know. Hey. <laughs> it works so well, so well, because... <laughs> Then I'll go, it's arrogant. And I'll say, what did you want me to say? You say thank you when you receive a compliment. We, do you just want to tell me? Am I supposed to not know? I don't know what, what are we not both in on that? It's great, I love it. Yeah, that being rude and vain and 
prideful is not attractive. The woman who looks fine, I'm not going to comment on her looks. If one were to compliment that woman, if one were to be attracted to that woman, one would find her immediately less attractive when she behaves in a way that is uh, boastful and prideful and ugly. It's ugly behavior, and so it makes an otherwise attractive woman less attractive. So what I do is I refuse to look down when I'm passing a guy or a girl. Mm. But when I'm walking in the hallways of work or when I'm walking the trails or if I'm out for a jog, anything like that, my eyes stay up. You'll catch yourself wanting to walk past somebody like this. You know, just kind of like lowering your gaze, being submissive. And I refuse. And it's mm. a strong move. And sometimes I'll even say, B in my head when I walk past, just so that I give myself the confidence to walk past without lowering my eyes. You should try it. Great. Oh, I'm very supportive of that. This was something I noticed in Italy. The looking down, especially when it's a man walking by a woman, the looking away or looking down, that's a very American. I think it's maybe Anglo more broadly. The Italians don't do that. The Italians, you walk by a woman, you, they stare right at her. <laughs> And uh, they're a little bit more forward as a people. Something about that Mediterranean sun. And I like that. That's a nice power move. And I like what she says. She walks by, she goes, hey. Yeah, okay. It's very, it's not just, that's not feminist at all. In fact, I find that kind of coquettish. I'm, I'm into it. I have two. The first one is that whenever I'm addressing an envelope to a couple, I always put the woman's name before the man's name. Just put a pause right there. Who is the head of household? Is it the man or the woman, the husband or the wife? What's their last name? Does the woman take the husband's last name as is traditional? Sometimes today they'll keep, the woman will keep her father's name. So you still have two men's names there, but the woman will keep her father's name. And then they seem as though they're not married. They're not one family. Or sometimes people will hyphenate. That's popular now too. You're a f***ing hyphenate? Someone's name is going to go first. So does it make more sense for the woman to be the head of the household or for the man to be the head of the household? What do you think? What do most women want. I bet more women want the man to be the head of the household than men want to be the head of the household. Because women like it when a man is strong. Men, usually, if we were really left to our own druthers, we would sit on the couch eating potato chips, watching TV, doing nothing. We wouldn't make decisions. We wouldn't lead. We wouldn't take on stress. We wouldn't work very hard and feel that we have to pay the bills. But we do it because we're called to do that. We feel that's our duty. And I think the women like that. They don't want some soy boy beta cock. They want a guy who's actually going to do his job. So in that situation, who's going to be the head of the household? Is it going to be the man? He's going to be resting his, his head on the woman's shoulder. He's going to say, oh, honey, go kill the spider for me, please, honey. Well, how to do? And then the wife has to go kill the spider? I, no, I don't think so. Get it, get it, get it. Everybody wants the husband to be the head of the family because man is the head of the family naturally. Well, if the man's the head of the family, then you should put the man's name first. And frankly, you shouldn't put the woman's name on the letter, period. You should write the letter to Mr. and Mrs. Michael Knowles. Now let's see how it looks so far. You have come together. You've left your families of birth and you are coming together and becoming one flesh. And what God has joined, let no man separate. Not only do you put the man's name first, that's the name you put, period. Punto e basta. Avete capito, bravissimi ragazzi. But they can't understand a word of it. Keep going. As an elementary school music teacher, sometimes in the classroom I'll need like chairs or tables moved. And so I always ask, I need strong students to move this for me. And I always pick 50% or more of those students, girls, because girls are strong. Yeah. And you know, when I go and I pick the football team at recess, I always pick the kids who don't have any legs. Yeah, I do just to make a point. When I pick people to carry the heavy stuff around the classroom, I always pick the physically weakest people to humiliate them and mock them and to upend reality. That's good for anybody, right? No. I don't think it is. I think it's about as good for, for society as feminism has been, which is to say, not very. See you next time.